here, idiots. What's this road trip? Where are we going? To Borne Hefter. Which is one of these strange outcast islands. It's Belgium's only island. The island. Would you say enclave. this? It's an enclave. I know, but I'm just uh, joking. <laughs> You're a fucking <laughs> idiot, man. Yeah. Okay. Now describe how this came about. And who are we visiting there? Well, we are visiting Mr. Meng Mengering. <laughs> the brewer of the uh, Dr. Van der Koenach, uh, the excellent brewery. Yeah, it's actually, I, the more I think about it, it's probably my favorite. Yeah, mine too. Uh, and we're visiting the, the little place where, what's it, a tap room? Yeah. And we're visiting the tap room. You guys, first time you ever went there, I guess? Yeah, yeah. it's very yeah. nice. Uh, Speak draws. up a bit. Oh, yeah, we can, we can take some pictures there, I guess. And uh, but in yeah, terms obviously. of the beers, describe the tap room again. Sorry for interrupting. Well, there's uh, there's four taps. They have four taps. Uh, it, one of them is not even for sale. You can only drink it at the tap if they still have it. They had it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it's the it's the Oak Edition uh, Passepartout. They have it on tap at least 20 days ago. So uh, you can only drink it there. It's the only. I think. I think. I'm not 100 percent sure. And there's uh, three other lovely beers from Tab there, and those which are obviously hard to find from Tab because I don't think a lot of bars have it on Tab. And uh, you can just buy a bottle there from the shop. Usually they have some cold ones stored as well, and you can just drink it. And uh, in the last month or two, he just unveiled a limited edition yes, beer. What, yes, what yes, is yes, that yes, one? Can you beer. describe I it? I think it's about 650 bottles or, or maybe 700 bottles. I don't know, maybe less. Even. And it's a very nice beer. It's an old English ale. Uh, and he had it, he, he took some, a little bit of wild hops and, uh, and, and added that to the, to dry, the dry hopping process. And he also used a, another hop, which I rarely have heard about. Um, it's not it's not one of the common hops, and it's actually lovely. It's it's a lovely bear that gets that gets to you. It grows onto you. I thought it was excellent. Has he ever had a bad hit? Because I think once I might have tasted a bad hit, but I think I would not refuse. Or I'd rate highly every single one of the beers he's yeah, put out so far. We actually far. just uh, saw one of your check-ins on Untapped of the beer he actually should have at his tap. Yeah. That's the beer that was oak the, the Passepartout, a session oh, IPA right. that was oak aged. And you said it was not uh, par to the usual quality standards. Ah, uh, that was the but one. But that might be true because I think there's a lot of thought going into his beers. Yeah. He puts a, a lot of thought into yeah, it and, uh, in the process, and that beer was actually accidentally made. He, he accidentally put it. That was a, a Brussels Beer Fest 2018. He accidentally put it on. Oh, uh, that's the one you were on, talking on about. Barrels. Uh, he, he put a session on and was not supposed to be that one. But he said, "Okay, let's let's just serve it at a beer festival, because." Yeah, because he didn't want to sell it, he didn't want to bottle it. He said, let's just bring it to the beer festival. And it was also quite amazing for what it was because it was only 3.5% alcohol. And uh, the taste was almost like 7, 8% beer. So that was amazing in and of itself. And the beer was not, perhaps not uh, that qualitative uh, comparing to his, his regular beers, but it was, it was, it was something special. I hope I mean, he, he didn't read that and holds it against me. <laughs> no, no, he won't. It was still a good beer. I thought it was amazing for what it was oh, because it's uh, it's it's so drinkable. It's 350, 3.5 yeah. percent. That's that's nothing. Yeah. And it was uh, it had uh, a good taste, like yeah, like a, a regular beer, a mid a mid alcohol well, beer. So I should sip it again just. To... I hope he still has it. We'll we'll find out yeah. soon enough. Yeah, Hannah, well, what's your favorite one of the? Tochter. Of his beers. Uh, what did I have? The Charbon? The Charbon? Ah, Charbon. The, the, the smoky one. Mm -hmm. Can you like it for smoky beer? No, you don't like smoky. I think he has Charbon on tap as well. I mean, Hamel and Arde is also I love his one. stout. Which is the one? Which one so do you like? Hamel and Arde. It's a very oh, earth that, that's tasting from, one. That's from the Mola, man. That's from the oh. Mola. <laughs> Hey, beer hey. idiot! Hey. Yeah, fucking idiot. I cannot do two things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that oh, one. Oh, let's go. That's that. Dieter is our two. 
driver. Hey, he was the most responsible driver. He was so responsible. Yeah. Okay, so which one, really? Uh, the smoky one I also like. Um, but, uh, I really don't know his names again. I, that's why we go to there to do some imperial research. All right. Yeah. All right, buried it. Called, uh, so um, apparently, the bulk of Barla Hertog, uh -huh. where most of the 2,700 people live, is a uh, part of Belgium. It's as part of the main Belgian uh, land. But these are a series of enclaves where we are now. Okay, which are still connected to so, Belgium. So it's called an exclave, apparently. What's the difference between an enclave and an exclave? Well, an enclave is entirely surrounded. Mm -hmm. An exclave is partly surrounded. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. so you mean uh, it actually has a connection to Yeah, it has a connection. Mainland. Uh, the southern right. part is, is uh, in Belgium, the mainland of Belgium. Yeah. Belgium. Oh. So this is where we're going. We're going to an exclave, not an enclave. Yes. And it's called? Barle, yeah, Barle Duke. In French? Barle Duke. Yeah. But uh, in Dutch, the Dutch name? Duke. Barle Hertog. Yeah. Oops. You can see it's clearly Dutch here with the jumbo store. Uh, and apple the back. Oh, that's a... It's mostly famous for its fireworks because all the Dutch people come to buy fireworks here because it falls under the Belgian legislation <laughs> and not the Dutch legislation. So it's just the easiest trip for them to buy their fireworks. So it's got this giant fireworks factory, but why? What? I don't know. It's it's banned factory, fireworks are banned. There's, just, there's a lot of fireworks stores. There is a law in Belgium you cannot buy fireworks as a Belgian in Belgium except if you have a permission of the mayor. But that doesn't count for other Europeans. So all the Dutch people go to a Belgium shop to buy, and they can buy five kilograms of fireworks <laughs> over the border. So that's why always at the border of Belgium, everybody. Everybody um, buys fireworks in Belgium if they're from Holland. And because the Belgians, Belgians do the same for the Dutch? No. Nope. No, because the Dutch are just crazy about because fireworks. Because in Dutch, in Dutch yeah. you can only buy fireworks uh, with a special license. But in Belgium, it's a free product. And because they're crazy, the Dutch are crazy. Ah, and that being said, we're oh, almost no. there. Yeah. It should be on our left, it says. No, because I didn't. Ah, here, go over there. Look around the corner. Oh, here we go. So let me drive back some. Yeah. Maybe you can get in here. Yeah, that's the road. Right here. Can I drive in here? Yeah. Doesn't say stop. We might have parking. Oh, here's fine. We're here. Thank you.